What's going on people? We are Tottenham TV here, back here for another episode of Player Ratings. I've been dreading this video pretty Ooh. much since the final whistle yesterday, mm. but we did lose 1-0 to Brighton in a performance that lacked confidence, uh, lacked aggression, lacked belief. Um, not by Brighton. But. No, not by Brighton. <laughs> I'm talking about Spurs here, but <laughs> it's just a disastrous and despicable performance in my opinion. And there's not many players on that pitch that get away without major criticism. Yeah, it was a shambles from start to finish pretty much. Uh, showed a tiny bit of uh, um, um, attempts to try and get back in the game in the last bit, but it was too little too late really. And we didn't show anywhere near enough quality to uh, really hurt Brighton. That's the most worrying thing. And with Kane out for another two weeks, Reg Regulon out, it's worrying times for us at the moment. The form we're on two wins in nine now, and it's it's a we're in a real crisis. Yeah, look, let's get into it. Let's start off with Hugo Lloris. We give him a six. I thought uh, he did. He had one good save in the first half. Pretty much dealt with everything that come his way, to be honest. But um, yeah, we gave him a six. Um, I thought he had a good save in the second half as well when a shot was deflected. Uh, from a corner and he just got down really low to save it. That was a really good save. Um, didn't yeah, didn't have any chance with the goal really. And I don't really blame him for anything bad really. Uh, so he's probably one of the only players who doesn't come over too much criticism. But yeah, it is what it is with Hugo. He made one good save. All right, let's move on to Toby Alderweireld. We gave him a five. A lot of fans calling for him to come back in the side and Jose did that. Brought him back into the side. First half, I thought he looked really, really shaky. Um, and I'm not sure kind of it was working that back three in that first half. Second half, I thought he was much better and he made that goal saving challenge um, against all the odds. So you got to commend Toby for his second half performance, but first half still wasn't good enough. Yeah, first off, he was getting overrun many times. So, like, Morpai was getting the run on him a few times. That was quite worrying. You're thinking, worrying. You're thinking, God, is his legs really gone? But you know what? Second half, I must say, he was a lot more aggressive. He was um, getting into the players. He wasn't letting them run off him uh, as many times. And obviously, he did make that unbelievable goal-saving challenge. I thought he was actually let down by his fellow defenders in the second half because I thought he was a kind of a, st um, a step above the rest kind of in that second half in terms of the back line. Um, so he kind of redeemed himself a tiny bit, but that first half uh, was a bit of a shambles from him. Yeah, which moves us on to Joe Roden. We give him a four mm. as well. Uh, a lot of fans calling for him to start again after his good performances, but um, it wasn't a good performance yesterday at the Amex. It really wasn't. Uh, for the goal, he was left ball watching, uh, which is not good enough for a Premier League defender. And I thought he was um, he was being caught out of space time and time again pretty much throughout the game. So, look, I'm not going to mark him down too much of it because it's his third appearance in a Spurs shirt starting in the Premier League. He's a young defender. Defender, uh, he will learn from this. Yeah, he made a lot of mistakes, and uh, for that goal, him and Davis didn't communicate at all. Both left Pascal Gross to get to uh, free in the box to square it to um, Trossard, who also has no communication about him as well, and end up in a goal. Also, a few times Joe Roden was caught out. I uh, remember in the counter attack for, for that um, goal that um, Toby saved, uh, Roden just let uh, the guy overlap. I know he had a lack of protection, but he should have been more commanding in that position. And um, there was it wasn't the only time for the, for the Lewis Dunks header, which Gareth Bale cleared off the line. Uh, he lost his man. He was Lewis Dunks' man, and he completely lost him. It was just a game riddled with, riddled with mistakes. And I know he's a young defender who you expect mistakes from him um, when he's first coming into the team. But uh, it was uh, was one of those displays where it, it wasn't helped that he was surrounded by a shower of shit, but he as well um, didn't contribute well in that game. Let's move on to Davinson Sanchez. We give him a four, got hooked at half time uh, to change the formation uh, back to a four in defence. Uh, but I thought first half he was all over the shop, literally all over the shop um, and just did not do his um, cases of staying at the club, never mind getting a starting position any good because I think Davison Sanchez's performances seem to be getting worse and worse and worse. That you remember in the right beginning of the game when um, they hit the post, Pascal Gross outside the boot, he hits the post. Davis completely lets Morpai run off him. Sorry, not Davis, Davinson, I mean, completely lets um, Morpai run off him. Wasn't aggressive enough, allows Morpai to control the ball, turn, pass it into McAllister, who passed into Gross, who uh, um, he got the shot off. It wasn't aggressive enough. And how many times did we see Sanchez on the ball yesterday on the right hand side, look at um, with time on the ball, look 
looking to pick out a pass and he gives it away time after time after time after time it's the biggest criticism I've had with Sanchez and it came to the fore again I thought he was dreadful I really thought he was dreadful going back the other way defensively he looked like he didn't look strong either um, he wasn't the only one but he really was a bit of a liability going back the other way but my biggest gripe with him is his control on the ball his possession uh, his um, control in possession woeful so woeful and uh his passing i don't i don't know if he's ever going to improve honestly because it's been three years now and uh he hasn't improved his uh quality on the ball and we're just still waiting for it and i thought he was going to be like at half time I actually wasn't sure who's going to be the one hooked off but he chose sanchez. i was convinced it was sanchez at half time i thought it might have been toby because if he's leaving a back four then maybe toby's not the one you want to leave honest, back all there three but of them could have been hooked that's the honest but i'll tell you time. i think he was right he was right to hook off sanchez because toby improved a lot in the second half and uh sanchez was woeful in the first all right let's move on to musa sissoko we gave him a four uh, started off as a right wing back in a back five and i thought it just didn't suit him whatsoever i mean i thought that he was getting up well um he showed some good pace and good aggression but there's just no quality um in the final third from him although i do think he put in a couple of good crosses but no one was ever there when he did cross the ball in um i thought he was getting up and down well sissoko in that first half but ultimately he stopped running because no one around him was running and, uh, and you can't really forgive anyone for stopping to running Sissoko did that and I thought not a good display from Musa. he's playing right wing back and I don't think he he was the worst player on the pitch but he didn't he look just comfortable gradually there and gradually got worse and worse he didn't look comfortable and we need when you're playing a player in right wing back you need them to especially in the way we're playing we need them to be comfortable in that position and we need quality we need quality from them in the final third and he just doesn't offer that uh, only a few there was a few times where he got in the final third and he took on Solly March and he was getting a bit of joy, but it wasn't it wasn't enough quality. You know, you wanted someone like Serge Aurier who you know you can put in a, who's more likely to put in a bit of quality in the box than Sissoko. And it's why in the second half when we have a target man, he didn't get he didn't get much joy because we weren't offering enough quality from wide areas and that was a big problem. Yeah. I mean I think Jose has a has a has a part to play in that and we'll, which we'll get does. which we'll get onto in a bit but let's keep going through the players and we'll get on to Jose uh, but we start off, go on to Ben Davis we gave him a three I thought it was an absolutely pathetic performance from Ben Davis I really did and I thought passing was wayward um, his he his mistake for the goal his mistake time and time again throughout that game um, he was making mistakes where professional footballers should not be making mistakes especially one as experienced as him so I'm very unhappy with Ben Davis from that performance yesterday I don't know how you can get outpaced by Pascal Gross how can time you, and how time can again you do that? it wasn't even just once how can you do that especially for the goal he did he completely left Pascal Gross run off him and he couldn't even catch up to him um, for the for the for the chance on the counter, which Toby stopped on the line, Ben Davis is trotting back into position, not getting back in position in time, and ends up in a chance. I thought in possession as well, lack of serious lack of quality from Ben Davis. Um, he and he followed up his woeful performance against Liverpool with another woeful performance um, today, yesterday, and it's really worrying because we're going to have to rely on him. So worrying, and we don't really have any other options at the moment. I don't know what what Jose is going to do. Like, who can he play there? Because Regalon's out, so and he's going to have to play Davis every game, and it's only a matter of time before Davis gets injured because he can't keep playing game after game in such a short space of time without having serious effects. So he's going to get injured, and he's struggling anyway. So I, I it's a worrying situation in our left back at the moment. Moving on to Pierre Emil Hoybier, we gave him a six. Um, I wouldn't say there was much wrong in his performance, but there was also he was trying. He was trying. That's the main thing. I think that it was hard for him in the middle of the park there, combating Basuma as well. I think that they flooded the midfield. They had Basuma who was everywhere. They had two other men in there, and it was really hard for Hoybier and Dombele to stamp any authority on the game being outnumbered. Um, I felt for him a lot, Hoybier, in there because you could see he was trying and he was trying to make stuff happen, but it just wasn't happening for him. Yeah, I mean, he, him, uh, Basuma, Gross, and McAllister were able to just pass around our midfield and it was so easy for them. Uh, Hoybier tried his best, but he, he had too much ground to cover. He had way too much ground to cover and Brighton was stretching our midfield left, right and centre and we couldn't recover, which is why we had to change it at half time, uh, put an extra midfield body in there. And um, apart from a few counter-attacks, at least we um, had a bit more control in the centre, but um, on the counter they, uh, they did us because we were flying forward and we couldn't recover in time. Um, but yeah, Hoybier tried his best, but 
he 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 wasn't helped by the tactics in the first half. I just feel so bad for Hoybier because you know he puts in so much passion, so much work rate, so much energy, and he must be looking around him at some of the players and being like, "What the hell is going on here?" It's too many. Too, there is too many average too players. Too many passengers on that pitch yesterday. Uh, but anyway, that moves us on to Tongi Undombele. We gave him a six as well. Unfortunately, went off with an injury. We're yet to see how bad or how. <laughs> Uh, how bad or how long he's going to be out for. But in terms of his performance in the first half, I thought, again, similar to Hoybier, that he was completely outnumbered in there in the middle of the park. Every time he got the ball, he had three men around him. Um, he wasn't helped out by his teammates. Um, but he was trying to make stuff happen the whole time. He was trying his tricks. He was trying to get past players. He was trying to break the lines. But again, it just wasn't happening for him just because he had so many players around him and it was a difficult situation for Tongi and Dombele. And in the second half, when we did get that extra man um, in the midfield, he got injured. Yeah, he got stamped on top twice, I think, during the game. And uh, that really that affected him, I felt. But he he's just trying to do too much. Like he had too much to do in that game, um, in that double pivot, especially in the first half. He can't do it all on his own. He couldn't. He couldn't uh, outrun everyone with Basuma, who was who was making so. He was everywhere, Basuma. You couldn't get away from him. And a few times he was crowded out. He was trying his tricks and everything, but he was just crowded out in the centre mid. And then when whenever they came forward, he had he had always two three men to mark. Like he had a man on the ball and a man running off him and he couldn't do it all. And he was struggling. He was struggling and it wasn't his fault. Second half, yeah, I thought it was more tailor-made to him, but he got a stamp on. He, you saw he was limping throughout the whole second half and uh, hopefully the injury isn't too bad. Haven't heard anything yet, but it didn't look great. If he's he out, we're off. fucked. Seriously really fucked. didn't didn't look good at all when he came off. And uh, again, when he did get chance on the ball, I thought a few times he was showing his quality as he always does, Tongi. But, but there was no movement in front of him. That was the problem as well. Yeah. Literally no movement. Uh, but anyway, it was that, tough for him. Yeah. This brings us on to Gareth Bell. We gave him a four. Everyone uh, was excited to see Gareth Bell in that starting lineup uh, yesterday. But um just didn't work out for him just like it didn't work out for any of those players on the pitch i felt that there were moments where he was trying in that first half some moments of sharpness maybe in the beginning bits of the first half maybe the first 20 minutes but ultimately nothing was coming off for him the best moment from him in that game was his goal line clearance uh but apart from that i thought at times at times he was looking for the ball and looking to make that stuff happen but at times he did look a bit disinterested and and lacking of running as well so um, um, I think that's a that's a complaint people have said about him. But I actually remember a few times I remember him tracking back um, and and trying to get back in that's position. What I, yeah, that's what I said. There were there were moments of both in there. There were moments um, of both. There were moments at the beginning where he was tracking back, but I felt that as the game wore on, he just failed to do that and then got hooked on the 60th minute. Yeah, maybe I actually thought in the first half it's it's, it's um, damning with faint praise, but he I actually thought he looked better than Bergvine and Son in that front three. If anyone looked like something was looking to happen, it was gonna be it looked like it was gonna be through him rather than those two. Um but that having said that he still wasn't great. He he didn't look like he was gonna create anything. He just looked more likely than Son and Bergvine, which isn't saying much. Um I thought a few times he was tracking back and a few times he was working half of the team but um, I just feel like him on the right hand side. I don't know. I don't know if it's working at the moment. I think we need to try a new position for him. I think he needs to reevaluate how um, where he wants to play because on the I don't know if he has the qualities to be on the right hand side at the moment because you need searing pace and sharpness to be a winger in the Premier League and he just doesn't have that. I think he still has qualities like finishing, um, composure, things like that, heading ability. So I think he is definitely more suited to the uh, centre centre than he is to the right, but. Um, I think he was taken off on the on the hour. Um, I don't think he was the worst player when he was taken off. But I can under, but he was taken off because uh, they wanted to put more energy into the team. And again, it, it it's not working for him. And it's another game you can point to to say, you know, it's, this loan deal really is not working for us. Yeah, I mean, I kind of disagree. I actually think Bergvine um, offered more of a threat than Gareth Bell in that game. And the reason why I tell you that is that there was no movement in that side whatsoever. Um, look, let's get on to Stephen Bergwijn and I can carry on. Well, Stephen Bergwijn, we give a 4-2, but the reason I'm going to combat your your comment about Gareth Bell saying he was the one looking most likely for anything to happen, there was no movement in there whatsoever. Gareth Bell got the ball, yeah, there was a nice few moments in there, but I, t I don't think it was ever threatening. Yes, it was. you could probably say the same about Stephen Bergwijn, but I thought in the first half of Stephen Bergwijn, he was 
he was the only one trying to get the ball with quick movement, quick passes, and there was just no movement around him. I actually thought Steven Bergwijn looked the most dangerous out of the three in, in, in the first half and, and in the second half, to be honest. I thought that he was getting the ball on the deck, he was trying to beat men, he was looking for those quick passes, and I don't think you can say the same for Sonny or Gareth Bale, and I thought that he, he saw the ball a lot more than uh, Gareth Bale and Sonny as well. So, in my opinion, I thought Bergwijn was the better out of the three, but... Um, still, nothing ever came off for him, so that's why he gets the same marks as uh, Bell and Son. The reason, the reason I disagree with you there is because Mourinho said specifically on his on his post match um, uh, comment saying that he that he put Bell on the right hand side to give him a very similar dimension to what Kane does in terms of he can cut inside and look for passes and look for runners. Um, so whenever he picked up the ball, the lack of movement from the from the from the forward players hurt us. And I think Bergvine is the one who should be running, not not looking for the passes. And I also have a have a problem with Bergvine when teams sit back against him and he does he isn't afforded any space. He seems to really struggle. He seems to really struggle, which is a big problem because. But I thought at least he was trying, Stephen Bergvine. I mean, he was getting the ball. He was try a lot. He had a lot of players around him, and he was trying those quick passes, trying to pass and move. But just no one else was passing and moving with him. I don't know. I, I felt like there was a bit of a lack of quality yeah, from Bergvine in the in the in the areas where he needs to be a bit nimble, be a bit um, sharper. Well, I mean, there was a lack of quality from everyone, wasn't it? Correct. There? And I think Bergvine was also a lack of quality. Um, I think there was a lack of quality from him trying to pick a pass and unlock the defence. He never looked like doing it for me. And um, whenever he passes it uh, into into a man and and his his movement um, off the ball. I feel like he's wanting a bit and I feel like he's a player who needs space. He looks like he's a player who needs space, who thrives when when um, when he's one-on-one -on -one or when he's on the counter-attack. That's when he looks his most dangerous. But when he's coming up against a packed defence, he seems to be found wanting at the moment. He seems to be really struggling to break anyone down. And, that, and that's a worry for Bergvine. Um Yeah, I mean, look, I'm not saying Bale was miles better, but for me, all I'm just saying is I thought... Bale was look, looking for me um, more likely to make something happen than Bergwijn or, or Son. But I'm talking about like half a percent here. I'm not yeah. talking about anything uh, big. I thought they were I all, mean, four, all yeah. three of them were woeful, to be honest. Yeah, look, I kind of disagree with you, but it's fine margins here. But let me know in the comment section below, uh, who do you think was better, Bergwijn or Gareth Bell? I mean, there's not much in it, to be honest, but um, let's move on. To You're the... talking about the difference between like a four and a 4.1, yeah. you know yeah, what exactly, I mean? Exactly, exactly. Let's move on to the last of the Stark 11, Hyunmin Son. We gave him a four. I mean, he was starved of service pretty much the whole game. I thought he looked a tiny bit better when he moved over to the left-hand side when Vinicius came on, but ultimately not good enough. Yeah, he had uh, he had three defenders on him, um, and he couldn't get a run uh, at all. His passing seemed really off it, really yeah. off it. I remember was, beginning yeah. of the game, we were like, he couldn't string a pass together. There was that one moment, didn't win he, and right at the beginning of the game where he could have played Bale in. Bale was actually in on goal, and he plays it on the outside yeah. of Bale instead of the it was inside. The first few minutes, wasn't it? Yeah, literally very early in the game. That was a chance for us to get an early lead. And he plays the ball on the wrong side of Bale and the chance was gone. Um, there were a few moments like few that moments in the like exchanges. That. Yeah, which was, a, which was really frustrating. He couldn't get any sort of run on goal. He wasn't able to be found by any of our creative players. Um, he couldn't find any space. He had one shot, I think, the whole game, which was uh, from about 25 yards, which was straight down the throat of the keeper who nearly actually fumbled it. Um, but other than that, he didn't provide any sort of threat. And he struggled big time in the game, just like the rest of our players. And yeah, I think he looked a bit more comfortable with, with Vinicius on the pitch, but still wasn't enough of a threat. Mm -hmm. Let's move on to the substitutes. Carlos Vinicius came on at half time. We gave him a six. Um, and I thought the, the first few minutes of him being on the pitch shows why we really needed him in the, in the on the game yesterday. We had no focal point up there. Son was pretty much lost up top. And I felt that as soon as Vinicius came on, we saw that we could lump it to him and he can pr uh, provide that physical presence and target man up there. Um, he had one shot, which was a really good shot, actually, just wide. And I thought he, he did provide a presence up there that we really lacked in that first half so um, obviously it wasn't a great performance from Vinicius um, he didn't get involved that much but the first few minutes of the second half he got involved and it looked more positive but just need more from him it was a lot better than um what we had in the first half for sure we were definitely more of a threat he had our two best chances he had that header at the back post from a corner which forced to save out Sanchez and yeah. he had that shot inside the box which was actually a nice bit of play he got one touch away from Dan Byrne unleashes a shot on his left foot um, snapshot and it was a good effort and it was a good save from Sanchez to tip it wide um, other than that 
I think he was definitely more of a presence in the box. Unfortunately, we didn't get any sort of quality into him, especially from wide areas. You're expecting when you've got a target man, you need to be getting crosses in from us from the full backs and the wing backs. There was none of that. But what do um, we expect when Ben Davis and that's the problem Soko are providing the crosses? Exactly, that's that's the problem. And uh, he really did um, couldn't get anything on it. Um, a few times as well, um, he did some really good dribbling and was able to set us up on attacks. However, his his passing was uh, off it as well, and he whenever he tried to pass it into a player, it didn't quite come off. But I I would say we saw enough of that second half from Vinicius to maybe him starting in the next he game. Has I to think start so against Chelsea. Has because to. we really did. Um, seem to struggle uh, without him. However, what I would say is against Chelsea, it might be a different skill set because Brighton, we dominated possession against Brighton. Uh, we had more possession, more passes, true. more touch in the final third. The counter. But against Chelsea, they like to do that. So maybe we're still going to play. I feel like we might still go with Son up front against Chelsea, but I can see the... Um, Vinny the, could come in against yeah. West Brom. We, yeah, for sure. We can see the benefit of having Vinny in there. And I can see why most people uh, wanted him to start um, after this game. And I think we did make a mistake not starting him. Yeah. Uh, moves on to last of the substitutes that we're going to give a rating. Lucas Moura. We gave him a five. Um, always looking for the ball. Always looking to make the runs. I mean, he he made a lot of runs with the ball, but just no quality at the end of them, which is the same old story with Lucas. Yeah. He was actually sometimes really frustrating. I remember there was a moment... Um, like 15 minutes to go where he's looking to take on Sally March and he was like running towards the corner like where's he going <laughs> he's like literally running towards the corner flag to try to get past him like like what you're just Rains. running anywhere Rains, just man. not going anywhere and yeah he showed a few bits of nice dribbling but there's just no substance to it absolutely no substance to it and that's the problem that's always been the problem with Lucas Mora it looks like at the age of 28 he's never going to change that's just him and unfortunately this is the player we have and he has his qualities but unfortunately He's never going to be that elite um, attacker that his qualities deserve to be because he's got some of the best dribbling qualities in the league. But unfortunately, his decision making and um, is, is always going to let him down. Yeah. Um, Lamella came on with 15 minutes to go. We're not going to give him a rating, but what did you make out of him? I actually th thought we showed a bit more urgency when he came on. I thought he tried to drag the team forward. Well, those a bit. last 15 minutes was our best moment. Yeah, and I think he was a bit of a part of that. He was trying those little those balls into the forward players in and around the box, trying to make something happen. It didn't come off for him. And uh, also, he had that really stupid free kick where he was shot from about 40 <laughs> yards. I don't know what he was thinking. And it was straight down the keeper's throat, and that was never going to happen. But I thought, like, I'm not going to say he was good, but. He wasn't as bad as some of the other players. At least he tried to make something happen. He wasn't uh, completely awful. Yeah, exactly. He was like, yeah, a, he was just average ap apart from dog shy. <laughs> so that, that was that was Lamella. Um, it was better than he was against Liverpool. And he, seemed, he does seem to be a bit better in those central areas than he is on the right-hand side, I feel. Which moves us on to Jose Mourinho. We give him a four. Um, set up was completely wrong from the start, I believe. I mean, we said it in the predicted lineup how we needed three in midfield there to combat their three in midfield. Um, and it just obviously didn't work out, didn't play like that. Uh, second half, he did move into that and we kind of did look a tiny bit better. Um, but as well, why did we play a wing back system with five at the back with Musa Sissoko and Ben Davis on the flanks. It makes no sense whatsoever. I mean, yes, he wasn't done any favours with the players on the pitch, showing the quality that they showed, showing the kind of will that they showed, showing the desire they showed. The, the, com the team looked completely shot of all confidence. They look like they can't do anything. Literally, the defence is poor, the attack is poor, the midfield is poor. There's no runners in there. It's completely slow, static, lethargic. And Mourinho is not kind of... Uh, helped by that but he's also not helping them with the formation and the kind of change well I wouldn't say the changes but the formation and the personnel that he's choosing as well so I think that the players are solely to blame but Jose Mourinho has got a lot to answer for as well yeah I mean he's not I don't think he's helping the situation at the moment with um he got it wrong as I agree in the first half he did get it wrong I thought having the back three of Sanchez Roden Toby and a full backs of uh Sissoko and um and Davis with uh with uh, uh, the midfield two of Hoybe and Dombele it just it didn't work at all. We got completely overrun. Those McAllister and Gross were having the time of their lives Literally. out there. They were it was so easy for them to find pockets of space and to really hurt us to get in behind the defence. Uh, I credit him with changing at half time because we did look a tiny bit better. Um, and we would since moving to a back four. Um, but I guess as you know, it's 
it's easy to point that out because we were so bad in that first half. We should have started Vinicius as well, given that uh, we had more possession and given that we were dominating the ball and we needed someone with a bit more presence up there because Son wasn't providing that. Um, we weren't finding any that kind of space for runs in behind. And um, I feel like he has to, him and Bell have to have a discussion about his position. I really feel like that because I think they're, they're, um, they're dismissing him in central areas way too uh, easily. Because that looks I, like his best, his best work's been through the centre. Whenever, yeah, whenever he does his best work, it does look like he's in, it's in the central area. So I think he's got a look to play there and uh, maybe that could um, be a bit of a spark for him because at the moment... The right hand side it's not it's not working for him it really isn't working and he's got to sort that out and he really has to sort out how we're going to attack teams when they sit in a low block because it seems to that it seems that it's well sometimes we struggle sometimes we haven't i remember against newcastle they had a low block and we did really well and we created loads of chances and i remember first half against palace they had a low block and we created loads of chances but against brighton uh, they they didn't have a low block but they did allow us possession and we did nothing with it. That's the worrying thing. They're like, here, you don't have Kane. Just take it and see what you can do. And we couldn't do anything. But and that's, we, a, that's a real scary uh, situation. We gave we gave basically control to Brighton of that midfield with, with the two in midfield. Basuma was just running rings around us. And if you're going to give control away in the midfield and have a lack of numbers in midfield, you need your wide players to really step up. And if your wide players are Moussa Sissoko and Ben Davis, then what the hell are you supposed to do? Yeah, and, and I, I feel for him because obviously our starting two wide players are Orion Regalon and they're much more of a threat when they're on the pitch. But this is what happens, I guess, when our squad isn't as strong as yeah, we might have got, thought it was. You've got to know who your players are. You've got to know you, you're playing Sissoko right back and Ben Davis left back. Put it into a back four, flood that midfield and let's go from there. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I think a player, um, a, a manager of Jose Mourinho's stature and the amount he've, he's won in the past. I mean, he should be seeing that before the game starts. Never mind at half time. Yeah. And it's a disgrace, to be honest. But anyway, onwards and upwards. we got Chelsea on Thursday night. Uh, let's try and get a positive mentality and go into this game. And hopefully we can yeah, get I'm three points or something. At this but point, yeah, I'm but not really expecting know. much. But that was an absolute shit show yesterday. Um, that is our player ratings. 1-0 to Brighton at the Amex. Um, let me know your player ratings in the comment section below let us know if you agree or disagree with us with that complete pile of shit yesterday like subscribing comment and as always come, come on you spurs, spurs.